another December 7th has come and gone, but the memories of 73 years ago etched forever in the minds of many, some who were just children then. Tonight, KITV horse Catherine Cruz has the story of a man just eight years old when the attack happened who came back this year and actually spent the night in the home he once fled. This peaceful sunrise above the Arizona Memorial is what 81-year-old Tom Davey woke up to this December 7th. A stark contrast to the last time he was in the same Fort Island home, in the same room, but hiding under mattresses with his brothers. Hiding because that December 7th was in 1941. The backyard view that day was of Japanese zeros. His memory is vivid. Of course, when the Japanese planes, torpedo planes came over my house, they, I mean, I saw the pilot in uh, the first plane that came by, and he waved at us. His dad ordered them into the house, and history was about to unfold. As soon as I got inside, there was this tremendous explosion. Windows rattled, a couple of them cracked. 73 years later, looking through the windows of his old home, the enormity of that day comes flooding back. Walk out that back door. He said, holy mackerel. We're close. We're, we're lucky to. The families of Navy officers took refuge in the bomb shelter of the Admiral's home. It was from there that the children shared stories of seeing sailors and Marines fleeing the burning oil trying to get to shore. And it was from there that children and mothers helped to tend to the injured. The sailors were all lined up against the wall and there were some were, you know, moaning and they're covered with oil and some were bleeding. And uh, maybe some were dead. I don't remember. Children passed out cigarettes and held them to the mouths of those who could no longer use their hands. Davy recalls how his playmates joined the battle. While fire and smoke were everywhere, little hands would feed bullets into machine guns, an image his dad would never shake. He saw us kids load the machine gun belt. And it didn't look right. Kids doing that? Remarkably, it was a piece of his everyday life that was hastily packed away that day, forgotten in a crate for decades that's become a cherished keepsake. A waffle maker his mother was using to make breakfast that fateful day. I went and got a screwdriver and I popped it open and there was a waffle. Just like it was cooked today. And so I took a corner of it, or an edge of it, and uh, ate it. That was 50 years ago, and now what's left of that near petrified waffle is part of a show and tell when he talks to school groups about his experience. I have it in the will that if when I pass away, the waffle iron goes to my middle brother, then to my younger brother, and then when he goes, to my, my family, my daughter, son, whatever. And that's where it's going to stay. An endearing bit of Davy family and Ford Island history. Catherine Cruz, KITV 4 News. Fascinating story. Incredible. Wow. Well, Davy and the other surviving children of Fort Island met for the first time in seven decades in a reunion last February in Virginia. Five actually made it to Pearl Harbor for this year's anniversary. Three were able to actually spend the night in their old homes. And what a night it must have been. Yeah.